Hello, Rhino community. This is Randy. Record Store Day 2019 came and went on Saturday. It was a very successful day for me. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time. I uh, went to Luna Records, which is in Franklin, just south of Nashville. Got down there at about 7, a little after 7 in the morning. They were going to open at 8.30. It was raining in Nashville, but Luna is inside a, a shopping mall, and the mall was open, so we were able to wait in line. I was about number 40 in line. It's kind of hard to say for sure because some of the people had kids with them, so I don't know if you would really count them, but maybe their kids were buying records too. So, uh, Yeah, number 40, the doors opened at 8.30. I think I got in there at about 9.30. Uh, they had everything really well organized. It was all alphabetized. Uh, Everybody was really friendly, Matt. A uh, uh, really friendly uh, college guy was in front of me, and then right behind me were uh, three guys more, you know, in my age range. So, uh, yeah, we all had a great time talking uh, right up until we got in there. So, uh, it was good. I uh, had my list with me. I doubt if you can read that, but uh, this is my list. So, uh, I got in there, and uh, I, I was, you know, hoping to get uh, some or, or all of these. So, uh, yeah, they were all alphabetized. I got in the door, and uh, I was waiting to get to some of the ones that I had uh, on my list. And the, one of the first things I saw was, was this one. Uh, so my list and my budget were, were blown immediately because this was not even on my list. But I was looking at it. I like the Almond Brothers, and uh, this came out last year really on CD. Uh, I thought, you know, it's probably... Uh, a lot like uh, the Fillmore East, I think it's taken from the same shows. Uh, these are different. And then I was looking at it, and sides three and four are Mountain Jam, about 30 minutes of Mountain Jam, so that really convinced me, so I did uh, go ahead and get this one. So, like I say, this kind of blew everything for me. Here's the inside of it. There's a really good picture of Dickie Betts there. There's Dwayne over there. An uh, interesting thing about this one is I learned that Barry Oakley sang the vocals on Hoochie Coochie Man. Who knew? I did not know that Barry Oakley ever sang anything. So, uh, yeah. Uh, this also came with uh, this poster, which is the album cover. It's supposed to be glow in the dark, I think they said. So, uh, I'll have to find a good place to put that one. Uh, so, number one on my list. I was really happy to get it. Jay Garcia Band, Electric on the Eel. It was a, a live concert recorded in 1991 at French's Camp on the Eel River. I Here is my wristband from that show. Uh, it, was, it was an awesome show, and I'm glad they finally put it out. Uh, this package opens up like this. There's a like an envelope type thing and it goes down in there this opens up the whole thing will open up this all tucks in here I I'm not gonna take it apart I don't think there's any reason uh, to do that uh, yeah and then the records are just on black vinyl yeah black vinyl uh, the labels are all different colors as you can see so they're on round records and so they're like you know yellow and blue blue and yellow uh, yeah right, well may as well then show them to you here uh that's an etching on side eight so there's seven sides and then the last one is purple and yellow this is fantastic i i put it on and heard the first song and i you know i mean it just immediately brought back the whole show uh, so yeah this was my number one priority this was the reason I went and lined up early and so I was happy to get that my number uh, two on my list was Pink Floyd Soft School of Secrets I'm really glad to get this one because I, I didn't get the uh, Piper at the Gates of Dawn well I, I finally went to Discogs and, and got it about a year or uh, quite a while after uh, record store day when the prices went back to something semi-reasonable so uh yeah this sounds good i did not get the uh jamie coddle version so uh yeah i was just thinking about that you know maybe uh 
Jamie's will be, uh, you know, maybe that'll be listed in uh, Discogs as, you know, like the, the coddle version of, uh, of uh, Saucer Full of Secrets. He's the first person to discover it, I think, so, but this one is just fine, so. Uh, number three on my list, Poppies. I've seen quite a few uh, Record Store Day videos, and it seems like a, this was a very popular uh, record. I haven't listened to it yet, but I'm, I'm sure it's going to be good, and I... Uh, there are a couple bands on here that were on the, the 2011 compilation from uh, the 2011 Vanguard compilation, Record Store Day compilation. They had, uh, I think it was Circus, Circus Maximus, Serpent Power, Eric were, were on this one too, but the, but the songs are different, so that's good. So I'm, uh, you know, obviously... Looking forward to hearing this, and uh, yeah, several people have shown this so far, I think, but in case you haven't seen it yet, it came with this cool insert, and to read that, and it's on very nice translucent vinyl. Uh, yeah, poppies. So, uh, uh -oh. Okay, I had that list right here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so working my way down the list. So that was the first three on the list. I got the first three. So, I mean, the day was already a success. Number four on my list, West Montgomery. I had it. Yeah. So even though I was number 40 in line, it seems like uh, the people in front of me, I guess, had some different tastes or they, they had enough records of all these. So. Gatefold Sleeve. This is very early West Montgomery. This is West with, uh, well, Piano quartets, organ trio, uh, sextet with trombone and saxophone, Nat King Cole style trio, uh, and the last side is Nat King Cole style trio. So I think I've listened to this, and the first three sides I think are all studio. The fourth side is a live side, uh, and it really is in the club. You can hear. I was watching uh, uh, Travis Tone Arm Tango, and uh, he was talking about a, a record that he'd gotten. Uh, saxophone guy, Prez, Billy Holiday's guy, and he talked about how the, uh, that recording was, um, you, there was quite a bit of clinking of glasses and stuff like that, but he said after you get used to it, you really feel like you're in the club, and it's, it's good sound, and I would, I would agree, this works out that way too, so, West Montgomery, this is a two record set, it's just on black vinyl, this is on Resonance Records, so, archive label, I think they put out. Uh, they put out uh, live recordings, I think, that they have discovered uh, in people's vaults, I guess, or whatever. So I had a Stan Getz record with Antonio Carlos, or Joao Gilberto, uh, came out a year or so ago, so that was really good. Uh, number five on my list, Procol Haram Mono. Did not get it. I think that by the time I got to the peas down there, I had just really uh, gone overboard, so I didn't get it. Number six, Woodstock Mono. Once again, same story. By the time I got down there to it, I had just gone too far. Well, actually, I didn't see, uh, I don't think I saw either one of those, because I kind of quit looking, you know, at that point. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to spend any more money. So anyway, number seven on my list was uh, Hawkwind. This is a live album from Chicago in 1974. I haven't listened to this yet. I, I feel sure it's going to be excellent. It's just on black vinyl. Uh, labels are just like that. Um, an interesting thing on this, it has pictures of the band here and some new stories. And I live in Nashville, and there's down here in the corner, there's two stories about how uh, evidently on this tour they were playing in Nashville and there was a tornado and the uh, hotel they were staying in got, got hit by it. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting. So I didn't live in Nashville in 1974, though. Uh, okay, so that was Hawkwind. Next on my list was Tommy Bowen. Come taste the man. I was really glad to get this one because I love Tommy Bowen. And uh, these are all live recordings through the years. So, fantastic version of Post Toasty on here. 
The first song is People People, which is just beautiful. So, yeah, Tommy Bowen, one of my favorites. So happy to get that one. I think this was a, a CD that came out in the 90s, and so I think it's issued on vinyl here maybe for the first time. Uh, next one on my, was it next to my list? Yeah, next to my list was Gong. Live 1973 at the Bataclan in Paris. Came with this. These are just, I, I don't really, I mean, this is just an annoyance. I, I assume I'll keep it. Maybe I'll just slide it down in here. I don't know what the purpose of that is. Uh, gatefold sleeve. I have not listened to this one yet either. I I feel sure it's going to be good. I'm a big Gong fan. I have the box set of like their trilogy of albums. Uh, David Allen, the Gong leader, did all the artwork here. There's the band on the back, and here's the bigger shot of them on the inside. There's Steve Hillage right here. He's a fantastic guitarist. David Allen over here in the corner. Haven't listened to this one yet, so uh, should be good. Next, oh no, not on my list at all. Uh, this was probably one of the ones that caused me to quit looking after a while. Bill Evans, I uh, I don't know why this wasn't on my list. I don't know if I didn't see it on the list or it should have been on my list, but I'm, I'm very happy it was there. Uh, this sounds fantastic. This was the first, no, Tommy Bowen was the first one I played, but this one was next and uh, just awesome. So, this is, yeah, Eddie Gomez, bass, Marty Morell playing drums. Yeah, recording from, uh, well, obviously Evans in England, so recorded in England. Uh, so that was it for Record Store Day. Uh, it was, yeah, like I say, really successful. I, I basically got everything I wanted, or, or yeah, it's incredibly successful. I, uh... I picked up another record while I was there that day. I'd asked them to uh, order for me, and so uh, she uh, handed this to me when I got it to the counter. Deep Purple, Stormbringer. This completes my Deep Purple collection of it, uh, at least of the uh, Gillen Coverdale years. So in the next week or two, I'm going to be uh, filming a video. Please be on the lookout for it. It's going to be an, an audio cage match. Very exciting. Between Gillen and Coverdale. Before I can film that, I have to go through and pick out some clips. What I'm going to do is pick out three clips from each one. One of them is probably going to be an entire song from each person, which I already have those two pretty much in mind, those two full songs. But I'm going to uh, choose some, just some uh, short, uh, like some vocal, you know, maybe some, just some short parts uh, from these two singers to compare to each other, and then maybe a couple of live uh, parts. So they'll go head-to-head -to, -head to each other, and it will be up to everyone to uh, vote who finally wins this battle between the two. Uh, very exciting. One thing to keep in mind, of course, is that the uh, David Coverdale, you know, the singer here for uh, Stormbringer, and I guess starting with Burn, uh, is that, you know, Glenn Hughes, the bass player, sang along with him on most of the songs, so he's the one with the really high voice. Uh, so anyway, I'll be sure to point that out when I do my, when I do the cage match video. The, the winner's going to be invited to my house for... <clears throat> Uh, cookout, hot dogs and hamburgers, so, yeah, Gillen or Coverdale here at the Weaver household, as soon as we determine the winner, I'm going to provide round tra transportation from the National Airport all the way to my house and back, so, that's it, uh, yeah, I hope everybody had a great, uh, record story day, like I said, it was all very good for me, and, uh, please, uh, comment below if you have any comments about any of these, uh, records, uh, I'd be interested to know what you had to say about them. So uh, thanks very much. Have a great day.